Yeah, just want to make a quick addendum. I think in the previous video I just said um, distance metrics. Not all of the distance measures we discussed in the previous slides are metrics or proper metrics. For example, the cosine similarity is not a proper metric because it doesn't satisfy the triangle inequality, which if you remember maybe from other courses is um, defined as follows. So the distance between two data points a and C um, is smaller or equal to the distance between A and should be B, I think, plus D, um, B and C, right? Because um, B and C is like this. So where we have three data points, let's say A, B, and C on some number line. Anyways, um, just an addendum that the cosine similarity is not a proper metric but still it's super useful in practice in certain contexts. So in this video I'm going to cover the k-nearest neighbors approach, the k-nearest neighbor model, before we might mainly talked about the one nearest neighbor model. Uh, however there's not that much to say about uh, k-nearest neighbors because it's just um, a generalization of the one nearest neighbor method so this will be a relatively short video. So here I'm showing you an example of a k-nearest neighbors model. And again, we have our two favorite features, x1 and x2, arbitrary features and a toy data set here. So just to have it easy to visualize. And like so often, we want to classify a data point. So in this case, it's the question mark here in the center again. And what we do is we consider these data points in this radius here, let's say using a Euclidean distance measure. So if I would consider these neighboring points here to make a prediction about the question mark in the center, what would be the value of k in this k nearest neighbors approach? Maybe pause the video for a few moments and think uh, about what k could be here. I think that should be relatively uh, intuitive to guess right now. So yeah, k is five here. So this is a five nearest neighbors model. I'm considering the five closest data points to the data point I want to classify. And here uh, I should mention also we have three different classes. We have these um, these crosses here, we have these circles here, and we have these triangles here. So what we do is we take a look at all the data points in this, or the five closest data points, and we look at the counts of each class. So we see in this case we have one, two, three triangles, one circle, and one cross. So that means this triangle is the majority. We have three triangles. And the regular k nearest neighbors approach uses a majority vote to do the classification. So in this case, the predicted class label, can you guess what it is? Yes, it is a triangle. Yeah, so I just said in k nearest neighbors, we use the majority vote to assign the class label. Uh, yeah, let us be a little bit nitpicky about the term majority vote now for a second. So a majority vote is usually um, if we have two different classes and we look at the one that is in the majority, that means more than 50%. So in this case, the majority vote would be the square. So in this case, A here, this would be the square symbol. Here would be the majority vote. Another term for that here in this case is plurality vote. I just see there's a typo. I wrote plurality, but it should be plurality. And here too. Oops. Plurality. So the plurality uh, vote in this case would also be the square. Um, in the bottom example, in example B here, However, we don't have a majority vote because there's, if we have three classes here, there's not necessarily anything that has more than 50%. So for example, if we would have one circle, one square, and the rem uh, remainder would be these green diamonds, then the green diamond would be the, uh, the majority vote because we would have more than half of the data points as diamonds. But here in this case, there is no symbol, so the square, the circle, and the diamond, none of those reaches more than 50%. So we don't have a majority here if we are strict with the words. In this case, we actually have a plurality. So the plurality means the data point 
that occurs most often in in this data set here. So in this case, it would be the diamond. So, but usually, you know, in practice, we are not that picky with these words. We just say majority. Um, I think in Britain, it's also called the relative, uh, the, the plurality is also known as the relative majority in certain countries. So let's say British English has the word relative majority, which means in American M uh, English, plurality. So we don't need to be super picky in this class. So we will just use majority to mean the label, the class label that occurs most often. So in that sense, we say in K nearest neighbors, we pick the data point, or sorry, the class table that occurs most often among the neighbors. So, and we call that the majority vote. Um, maybe also related to the slide now that I see that, one question you may have is, what happens if there is a tie? So for example, we consider a three nearest neighbor algorithm. Let's say we have our three nearest neighbors. There's a triangle, a square, and a circle, and we want to classify this data point, and there are other data points around it. But here in this radius, there are only these um, three data points, and each one has a different class data. What, we, what do we do in this scenario? So it really depends on how it's implemented in software, but usually, yeah, there's no really no good way to pick one data point over the other. We would just pick one label at random, so it's not a good thing to do, but that's how it works in most software packages. Usually in software packages also, you have integer class labels, let's say zero, one, two, and so forth. And usually the software, if there's a tie, would pick the one with a lower class label index. There are certain modifications of k nearest neighbors. I will talk a little bit about this later in a later video that consider the distance though. So if you have these five nearest neighbors, you would still, even though you found the neighbors, you would still consider the distance to the center point here. So for example, one of these three might be closer to the center than in one of the other ones. So you would uh, pick the class label that is corresponding to the training data point that is closest to the center. But yeah, I'm going into too much detail here at this point, I think. Um, just what I wanted to say here on this slide is, technically we have a plurality vote in k nearest neighbors, but we can just call it majority vote, it's just fine. I think among us, we know everyone knows what we mean by that. Yeah, if you would like to have it a little bit more formal, the definition of the majority vote, here I've written it down in more yeah, mathematical terms. So consider we have a subset D sub K, which is the subset of the K nearest neighbors. So if we have K equals five, these would be the five nearest neighbors here. Of course, D sub K is a subset of the whole training set. Now the majority vote part, this is this part here, is as follows. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this argmax function. So let's just um, untangle it from maybe from right to left. So this part here, this is the prediction, the returned, let's call it the returned, returned label. And Y is a possible class label. So both F of X and Y are both class labels. Uh, in the previous slide, we used class values or class labels square, oh sorry, triangle, square, circle. Now let's assume we have actual integers like one, two, three, up to t. So that is here uh, one of the possible class labels. And um, this delta function here, it's kind of the opposite of a zero one loss. It assigns a value one if a equals b, so that means if this value here equals the f of x, it returns a one, otherwise a zero. Now, um, what we do here is we compare, in a way, uh, we, we search for the class label that maximizes the function arguments here. Um, oh, we Sorry, we, we search for the function argument that maximizes this sum here. So if I have my neighbors, my five neighbors, let's say I have among my neighbors, 
the class labels one, one, two, three, one. So, oh, five, yeah. So let's say I have five neighbors like that. Um, and also note that we have the sum here. So I sum over the five neighbors and see which one gives me the best or the most, let's say the most, um, the highest, the largest sum. So I can put any value here for y, but um, if I don't put a value here that matches my neighbors, then I will get a zero, right? So if I put a one here, let's say, let's do this concretely. We start with y equals one, and I compute the delta here for this part. Um, so for this part, so I get first uh, one, right? get a one because a equals b. I get another one. Here I get a zero because one doesn't equal two. Here I get a zero and here I get a one. And the sum, the sum of that is equals, equals three. So if we would put a one as our predicted class label, or if we would put a one here, we would get a three. If we put a two here instead of so we put a two here instead of the one for y, what we would get is we could uh, get a result of one, right? Because there's only one two. It's the only one that matches here in this part. If I put a three here for y, if I put y equals three, the sum would also be only a one because there's only one three here. So there's only one matching this y here. So I can just um, yeah, try out all these different values and I will find that one maximizes the sum here. So the arc max, so the argument that maximizes this function here, the arc max would be y equals one. And this would be then the, the prediction by the k nearest neighbors on the, for the query point q. So this again, sorry, the f I said, um, it's the prediction, it's more like the return label for this data point. It's not the prediction, it's the return label. This is here on the left hand side, this h is the prediction. So the arc max is just a way of, let's say, <laughs> convoluted way of writing the majority vote, finding the most common class label. And you probably in other statistics classes just refer to this as the mode. So what is the most frequent data point? In our case, we are interested in the class label. So I was writing f of x, but really these are our y's, our class labels. I wasn't writing y because then it can be confused with this y here. Okay, I hope I didn't confuse you. So it's just or maybe a more formal way of writing the majority vote. Yeah, we can also use K and N for regression analysis. For regression analysis, that's actually a little bit simpler to write. It's usually just the average. So the regular K and N algorithm for regression is just averaging the continuous target values for the k nearest neighbors. So again, if we have a data set d sub k, um, the prediction h, so h is the prediction of k and n. So this is just the average over all the k nearest neighbors. So k nearest neighbors, I'm just averaging over the target values. So again, these are my y's, the target values of the training data points here, in this case, the k nearest neighbor training data points. Yeah, and that is basically it for this video. I think it was a little bit shorter than the previous videos. The next video will be again a little bit more interesting, I think. This will be a short video on big O analysis, like analyzing the runtime complexity of k nearest neighbors.